Bye bye. I'll hang around until the waving's in all the videos. Hello and welcome back and today I want to continue my look at Synology and their brand new app for Surveillance Station. The ability to turn your mobile phone into a live webcam. Now two things I want to hit straight away. One, the camera I'm recording on here in the background is a Rio Link C2 Pro. It's an IP camera for surveillance and I didn't really want to put a whole multitude of cameras out there so I thought it would be interesting to use this IP camera to record things here at the top left corner. Of course there is an FPS performance dip and the lips I'm talking are not going to synchronize with very well with what's on screen. So it's really there just for display to show you the difference between an IP camera and using your webcam. Secondly on the bottom right of the screen there we can see the mobile phone. Now I've tried to do screen recording using capture software software on the phone but unfortunately the sheer GPU um, and the rendering and the grabbing of the system resources means that you can't really live cam and record from screen using the phone itself so rather than try and invest in you know an external capture device again because I can't guarantee that would work in this scenario I thought I'd just go ahead and set up this camera over camera interface if you'd like to try this for yourself you just need to use OBS it's very straightforward and it's a great piece of software there but nevertheless let's get straight into it the Synology Live Cam software is available now completely for free on iOS and Android. And if you've already got a Synology NAS and you've got Surveillance Station installed, it's definitely advantageous. I'm looking down at the screen there in front of me, but I will wave at you on the camera. There you go. There's my missus, and there's a nice text from her. We can find out, and one I'll ask and some of your questions in the comments. But nevertheless, let's continue. So, once you've got the app installed completely for free, you click open and it will open the software itself. If you haven't already set up the, you can see me on camera, if you haven't already set up the software first time, all you have to do is put your IP address into the software and it will find your NAS on the network and it will do everything in the background. It will find the NAS in the background. It will add that camera as you can see via the top left there you can see that the camera at the moment is showing an exclamation mark to say that the camera's not active. And what will happen is when I click that little plus symbol in the corner, hopefully unless the GPU thing screws me over again, it will add this camera automatically to the software. So let's try it now. So now it's recording and on the top left of the screen there, the camera has now been added and there's a the little Logitech that I'm recording on. So the main reason I wanted to do this, because I've already featured this camera in the live streams and i'm sorry if there is a lag between when i'm talking when you see on screen if that is off putting i am very, very sorry indeed but what i wanted to talk about more is the settings of this app rather than just show you that it works because it clearly works there on screen but you can already see a difference in picture quality there on that recording on camera I don't know which camera to look at here so the settings are actually pretty straightforward it will utilize a number of the features and functionality of your mobile phone the top left there being the flashlight but of course because i'm using the front camera we're not going to be able to use that flashlight but take my word for it that you can flip it around and utilize the light on the back there you can go into any energy saving mode here by using this option you see on screen and you can take snapshots throughout and it will take a brief snapshot while talking and there you go you can take individual snapshots as you go and there's a settings menu at the top if we go into that settings menu i'm trying to be too uh, gentle here you can choose between flicking between the different cameras you can choose whether you want the audio or not you can increase or decrease the resolution so now i'm going to up that to 1920 uh or so in other words uh, 1080p recording and you can change the frames per second up and down accordingly but i'm going to keep that at 30 frames per second as well as preset um, options which let you lower and heighten the quality accordingly you can make sure that the screen doesn't turn off which is essential if you are going to be utilizing this device for surveillance and everything from motion detection to rotation by days and storage is all open to you and this gives you all the options that you would normally have here on the screen and that's going to be a bit hard to make out on the top left but if you make your way into the ip camera settings you can actually change a number of key settings on an IP camera, but when it comes to the pixel, no matter how many times you click, you can't go into those options. And that's because these options are conducted on the phone level. And those are the main options there. They're exactly the same options as you see within the surveillance software. And if we click done, the camera will now upgrade those settings 
to the ones that I've selected. So it's going to disable the camera briefly and then re-enable the camera for those new settings that I've added. So hopefully you can see the increase in performance now in the settings that I've changed. I won't be able to see that until afterwards. Other options include being able to access some of your recordings, be they live or previous recordings from earlier, as well as the snapshots you've taken. And then there's individual settings that are less to do with the camera and more to do with the software, which are pretty basic to do with saving your password and more. And of course, you can unpair the camera if you no longer want to use it. So what are the benefits of this software? Well, first and foremost, if you want to be able to take advantage of the surveillance software on your Synology NAS, but you don't want to have to go to the trouble of buying extra cameras, this is a way around that, utilizing old mobile phones that just need to have network connectivity and access to the iOS and um, Android Google Play Store. So these are options that are open to you. Just get rid of that option there. Sorry, popular guy. Um, but nevertheless, I'm going to wrap things up now. The last thing I'm going to do is click that power saving module there to see what happens when we click that. But this has been a test of live camera from Synology and their surveillance software. Let's have a quick look what happens when we click that. And that's just going to modify the system settings. You have to give it permission to modify the camera settings, but I'm not gonna do that now because it might ruin the video. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe and do comment down at the bottom if you enjoyed this. Bear in mind, this is not supported by Patreon, not supported by PayPal. This is supported by you and your interaction with this. Do check out the free advice section at NAS Compares and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye. I'll hang around until the waving's in all the videos. <laughs>